Yeah, okay. It's Tuesday. It's the movie show. And George Casey and me, we review a movie every couple of weeks. And this time we're reviewing The Lake House, uh, 2006, on Netflix with uh, Sandra Bullock. She's wonderful. And Keanu Reeves. He's wonderful, too. The two of them together. And this is the first time they made a movie uh, after uh, the movie about the, the bus. Remember the bus? What was that mm -hmm. called? Um, they, they were together in 1994, uh, riding this crazy bus. The bus was out of control. It was, <laughs> and, if, and if it slowed down, remember that? If it slowed down below a certain speed, it would blow up. It was, it was a really very creative movie. But they were together. And this is the next time they were together, 2006. The Lake House is originally a Korean movie. And this was a remake of a Korean movie. I didn't see the original Korean movie, but this is very good, The Lake House. But, you, you know, you thought it was good too, George. And, um, and I wonder why. What, what caught your attention about this movie? Because it has, it has one of these time plots, you know, change in time. And, um, you know, back in the old days, it would be simple. You know, you go fly into the future or fly into the past. This was much more complex in terms of the change in time. I can't tell you that I ever really wrapped my mind around it. And I'm hoping, and one of the reasons I wanted to meet with you today, George, is that you could tell me what was going on with the time. It was a two-year difference, and yet, and yet they could have a love affair two years different. How did that work? Had to do with a mailbox at the lake house, which both of them were living in at different times, right? And uh, Keanu Reeves' uh, character, Wyler, whatever his name was um, in the movie, he had lived there. Uh, his, it seems that his father, who was also, he was an architect. His father was also an architect and had designed this house that was sitting on a lake, uh, you know, on silt. There was a ma mailbox on the shore. And, and basically, um, you know, one day he, he gets in there and he opens the mailbox and there's a letter from a woman who had lived in the house or at that point we thought had lived in the house before. And she, she's saying, could you, I, I've done my mail forwarding, but you know, it slipped through, which I well know, right? And if anything comes through for me, please forward it to my new address in downtown Chicago because she must have gotten a job. Um, she was an MD, right? So basically, you know, they write, they start writing to each other, right? And, and sort of get to know each other and, and sort of fall in love with each other, right? From, from the notes, right? It's something uncanny because she, she says to him, you know, um, something about a box. There was a box sitting in the, in the attic and there were cat paws along that walkway that went from, the, from land into the house. The house was sitting on stilts. And he doesn't see this. I mean, he, he doesn't remember that, that, that at that point in time where he is, his point in time, there's no box in the attic and there's no cat paws, right? So something uncanny is going on. So this is the time, time warp, you know? So as the plot progresses, you start, it starts to fill it in. But initially, you start to wonder. I mean, you don't understand what's going on until later in the movie, which I know you like when they live, they give you little pieces. That's they don't what happened here, little story. pieces, and you have to figure yeah. it out. And right. uh, you're just a step behind them because they have to figure it out too. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So little by little, they figured they're figuring it out. And you don't understand why the bot, there's no, in his time, there's no box, 2000, early 2006, right? And her time, 2008, there was a box in the attic and they were kept. But then as the show progresses, you see that back when he was at his time, earlier in 2006, he was painting that, that walkway and the cat went by and then there was a little paint on the porch. And then as he's ready to leave and go at the house, you know, to go uh, to, to leave the house, he 
he puts all her letters or whatever in a box, right, in the attic. And that was the box that that was in the attic that she never opened, right? That she left that bo the box in the attic at that point in time, right? Now, as things go on, they really get to fall in love. You know, they're, they're, you know letters, just like that other movie we saw, um, the, the English people, you know, with the, the falling in love, just in yeah. back in my time. Love, love letters, time, the yeah. last love letter it was called, right? That was a, that was a great movie. I remember 1967, I met this woman at NASA. I was taking summer courses at Nassau Community, even though I was at Stony Brook. And, and I met this young woman from Garden City and we sort of got to know each other and sort of fell in love, right? And then after she went back to some school, you know, in Washington, D.C., some private college, right? Uh, we were writing and in that day and age, you know, that was writing, you know, and they, this, this was what was happening here. So little by little, they fall in love. And there's a lot of non-secretaries you don't really understand because then he wants to meet her. And he says that, um, you know, they figure out there's a time gap, right? So he says that, he says to her, you know, uh, you know, I'll wait for you in two years from now. Uh, we'll meet at this restaurant, right? And she goes to the restaurant waiting for him, waiting for him, waiting for him. He never shows up. You know, the guy never shows up, but she just waits until they're closing and she's disappointed. And then she says to him in the letter, you know, it's just not going to work. We're in different time frames, right? And then she is uh, she's back in the, in the architect's office. In this architect, she finds this architect. She needs an architect. And it seems that the architect that she's going to is the younger brother uh, of uh, of this Alex Keanu Reeves, yeah, the lead, yeah, the lead. The lead. yeah. And, and and he and she asks, oh, who drew this uh, drawing on the wall? He says, my brother. It was my brother who did it. And and she says, oh, well, where is he living now? And and the brother says, fortunately, he passed away. So then she realizes that's why he didn't show up because he's he's. In 2008, he's dead. Now he was, trying, the, he was the, trying to reach her. He was trying to cross the street in this busy Chicago intersection. Yeah, that, 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 that's that's exactly is. what I'm going to get to, Jay. Yeah, that's go, that's the key yeah, thing there. Yeah, yeah. He was trying to reach her, and he got hit by a by a, a bus, right? And he died. And she was the M. She was an M. D. She was her mother there. She's with her mother, and she runs across and tries to save him, but she does. I guess she didn't remember the face, you know. Doctors see so many patients. She didn't remember the face because he was lying on his, initially on his face anyhow. So, so she didn't realize that. So the, and she realizes because, and he, she asked the brother, where did he get die? And she tells him the whole, he tells her the whole story. And then she realizes that that guy that she was trying to save that she couldn't save, that, that was the guy she's in love with in a time warp, right? So she goes and she writes, she rushes back to the, to the lake house, writes a letter and prays and prays he's going to listen, right? And then she says, please don't meet me at that plaza today. Please just forget it. Don't meet me. <laughs> so he's learned, he gets the letter, thank God, and he doesn't go to the plaza, right? And then they were able to meet in 2008, waiting, but that, that's the time. And that's the whole movie. And it's just, it was so heartwarming for me, you know? I mean, it was just, it was, anybody would really feel very touched by this movie because these two are really in love, you know? And she has this other boyfriend who she doesn't really like, but, you know, she figures, you know, she's getting older, she's got to end, end up with him. He's a real, I think he's, I found him to be a real jerk, <laughs> a jerk, you know? So she, so it, it turns out really good. This movie ends in, in an upper note. And one last thing, I don't know if you want to mention this. It was based on a, on a Korean movie from a few years before, uh, the whole plot. But this one ends a lot better than the other one. So that's basically the, the plot. Now, you want to get into any particulars that oh, I missed? Oh, I do, I do, you know? I do, I do. First of all, you, you know, you're, you're a graduate uh, uh, school architect right now. Oh, yes. And, and the whole thing was built around the lake house. And the lake house in, 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 in the Chicago lake there somewhere, 
um, was very important as a symbol in the movie. And um, uh, it, was, it was transparent. In other words, it was, the walls were like glass. Um, you could mm -hmm. see into it. You could see out of it. Uh, and as you said, it was on poles. Uh, it was really a spectacular residence, a place to live, a place to live, a place to live, uh, the lake house. And, and um, this had great significance in the movie. But how did you see that from an architectural point of view? Well, basically, I really liked the house. I liked the design. I liked the, the, the location where it was sited uh, in a lake. Um, and just the whole arc of the open, you know, glass and like, uh, what was that, Mies van der Rohe type, type design, yeah. And, and I think that added to, uh, for me, I, I mean, I just love the whole architectural aspect of this movie. That was a real plus for me as well. Um, what, what, why? I mean, what, it, what was it? That, how did the architecture connect with the story you just told? I mean, there's, there's some kind of connection. I don't know what it is. It's that is it's not that it's a haunted house, but it's a house that you can see through. Uh, it's a house that uh, that is so attractive um, that you can see beyond the reality. You can see into the past or the future. Um, the house offers you um, more than just a house. Am I right? And, and really, the lesson yeah. there is that a house can do that. A nice piece of architecture can do that. It can offer you much more than just a house, right? Oh, definitely. I mean, there's always the emotional, so sociological aspect of every design, you know. And it, it, it was in a natural setting on a lake, you know, uh, open to the, you know, to the water and stuff. But the brother and him were mentioning that there was no, the father had not done any way from the house itself to get down to the lake. So that was an aspect that it was sort of sitting on its own there. Um, you know, the only connection was with the land. You, know, you couldn't really get, to get to the water, you have to go onto the land to get to the water. But that well, was I think it's really that an important point. point. It doesn't touch the land. The lake house is in the lake, on the piling. It's the lake on house the lake. is only accessible by this kind of walkway, this wooden walkway, which as you said, right. he was painting in the, and the cat's paws. Oh, there's a lot of symbolism here. The cat's paws oh, yeah. walking on there. Um, the painting, the, the appearance and disappearance of the paw prints um, on this walkway. And the walkway itself is a very interesting walkway. It's the only access to the house. It, it has an aesthetic all of its own. Um, and it is symbolic in the sense that um, you have the mailbox, which, which roots you to the current time, whatever time that is. And then you have the walkway, and then you have the house, and they're not really connected. They're connected by the walkway, and um, yeah. it's like it's like a it's like a theater platform, it's like a stage. Exactly. The house is like a stage. Exactly. Yeah. That that and a lot of the things do you know with him. He's in the house while he's communicating. You know. And then finally, they're able to talk to one another on a cell phone, which is really interesting, too, you know. Um, so uh, I'm trying to think others. And the fact that that house was sitting, except for the, for the you know, the support into the lake, it's sort of sitting on its own, you know. Yeah, um, it's like floating in I the air. And I think that's symbolic, too. Yeah, yes, yes. It, it's yes. Something about that, that, that was symbolic, too. Uh, you know, on the water, on the on a lake, that is, you know, you think of maybe that had something to do with the warp, you know, because you got the reflection of the house in the water, you know. So there's a whole kind of symbolism that you're expressing that yeah. I think is really important here. Well, but, I want to go. Uh, I want to go back to the time thing with you, George. The time thing is, yeah. as I said at the outset of our discussion. Um, I never really wrapped my head around the time thing because there were no rules. It's almost as if, as if the, uh, the, you know, the, the, the producers, directors, the, the filmmakers here are playing with us and they're throwing this, this time thing out. But uh, it's very hard to understand exactly how it works and what are the rules. You know it's two years. 
you know that she's ahead of him, or was he ahead of her? One of them was he ahead of the uh, okay, ahead. Um, and you knew that their only connection was this very, how do you say this, ephemeral, the spiritual kind of connection through the mailbox. And the mailbox is a cruddy old mailbox which has all kinds of mystical powers. This mailbox is just an old mailbox. It's and it's not in the house. It's at the, at the um, you know the shore side of that gangway. But what I what I find interesting is that they the movie makers the filmmakers would have you believe that they were able to connect from different time zones. They they didn't really know each other. They only knew each other from mail that was. Um, you know, that, that was at random in this mailbox, almost at random. And it was like um, there was fate operating here, and, and the fate was going to bring, they were made for each other, and indeed the acting was very good. You know, as you said before, uh, it really was very romantic, and the two of them were excellent, both of them. You believed, you believed in their relationship. I, I think Sandra is, is a fantastic actress, uh, and, I, and I think that Keanu, you know, played Beyond anything I've seen him in, actually, this was very good. He's been in a lot of, you know, violence and and vengeance movies, but this was one of his best, if not his best. So anyway, so it just strikes me that what the what the filmmakers are telling you is that you can have a romance through a mailbox. You can have this serendipitous spiritual experience through a mailbox. They were made for each other. Even though they never met, and and time was out of joint, and I I got to wrap my mind around that because I think what it is, it's also telling you that you could be ahead or behind of the time when you were romantically involved with someone, and it doesn't matter. You know, you can look back and remember nostalgically somebody who you were infatuated with, um, and that's okay. And you don't have it's not it wasn't really a physical love kind of thing. It was a mailbox mailbox love. <laughs> you know, you've got mail, you've got mail. And, and, and I found that that was um, that was very appealing, in the sense that you know it 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 elevated their romance to more than just the customary romance. Uh, that that's what I'm trying to say. That I think this was so interesting. Um, because it it, it 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 was a step above, a step more yeah. a step more mm, symbolic, spiritual, whatever you want to say about it, uh, and 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 sustainable. And uh, gee, it was awful to see him killed in traffic, but then you realize that they understood it well enough, so that they could actually change the result. It changed. Yep. <laughs> yep. That, 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 that's the time thing that if you knew, if you know the, what is going to come in the future, right, you can change the result by just not being in a certain place at a certain time or, or doing something. And that, that, that's the key, you know, to, 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 to the, this whole movie, you know. And, and Sandra Bullock and Keanu Reeves, they really work really well together. I think they have. I don't know if romantic, but they have a lot of affection for one another. You can tell that they really like each other. And I think the earlier movie that, that, we, that you mentioned, they also worked really well together in that movie as well. So the, this was like a repeat for them to work together. And it was just it's a great movie. I mean, it really touched me at the end, you know, when they got together. That was just phenomenal. You know, so many movies really don't end on that positive note. This ended on a really positive note, and I really enjoyed that ending. So great movie. I mean, I just love this movie. So, so um, what else do you want to get into about it? I'm trying to think what else I can say about. This I want to. I want to you know, tell you the. I want to tell you the name of that movie. Um, 1990. Yeah, Il Mare, or something like that. Il Il Mare, or something like that in 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 in, in French. Speed. It, it was, was called Korean. Speed. It was called Speed. What was it? Speed. Oh, that you're talking about the Korean movie. I'm talking about the the one oh, they were yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about the Korean movie. Yeah. yeah, you're talking about the movie they were they were on. And then Christopher Plummer plays the two arch young architects' father. He's phenomenal. I mean, he just passed away last year. He's great. I mean, in this movie, he's just 
superb. He plays the role to a T, you know. Well, that's a whole and new dimension, that, isn't it? It's the relationship of the father and the son, the the demanding yeah. architect, is, the uncompromising architect, uh, who is in the previous generation, who really is not a very pleasant person, but highly disciplined, uh, highly successful architect. Um, a bastion of the community of the city of Chicago, and then the son who is creative um, and who represents another generation of architecture. Did yes. you see that? Yes. Did you see that? Yes, Sim similar to some of my instructors and professors at, at Manoa, you know, where the father is a prominent architect, and then they, these kids grow up in, 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 in that office, right, with that father, and they learn, you know, my mom and dad both had they didn't have college they just had two years technical school or whatever trade schools you know so when you have that kind of a a, a mentor in a parent it makes a difference yeah well it makes and a I, difference I, I, but it also creates a problem i mean I, I think i think it was very well handled in the movie um yeah christopher Plummer was mean uh he was demanding he was intolerant yeah, yeah. um very and, and um you know he was he he was he was, as I said before, he, he was a kind of guy, was highly successful, highly disciplined, but no love there, no love there. Um, and, it, you know, it's, I guess one, one thing I said to myself, gee whiz, you know, a successful architect really has to be that way, or at least had to be that way in that prior generation. You know, uncompromising, right, right. absolutely demanding, absolute perfectionist in every way. Um, and, and he had... You know, they say uh, lawyers uh, are married to the law. You know, the law is a jealous mistress. Well, architecture is also a jealous mistress. He was completely dedicated to his art form. Um, and, and you got that feeling. On the other hand, uh, Keanu Reeves was not. He was like emancipated in his own way. And um, yeah. he was not happy with his father. They had to work it out, uh, as so many movies, you know, allow you to do that. So, but I wanted to get... Get, get down with you I mean, on this thing. You know, if you look at Netflix, or for that matter, Prime, you see, and it's more and more the case here in the third year of COVID, you see these movies that are all about violence and vengeance, uh, like the original <laughs> Speed movie. And all these you know, detectives and cops and, and, and the European movies, and for that matter, the Asian movies copy it. They copy the violence and the vengeance and, the, and guns everywhere. Guns. I mean, if you go one scene, you know, without a gun, it's a failure. It's incredible how many guns there are in these movies that are on cable. They're feeding us a steady diet of guns. I'm not saying, you know, this is what happened in Texas, but maybe it, it had an effect in some way to think that you could shoot a gun. A lot of, I think a lot of young people, you could shoot a gun with impunity. That, you know, that is, it's a romance thing. Um, and um, it's too bad that they are raised now in the formative years of their lives on the kind of movies that I'm talking about, which are the um, beyond plurality, they're probably the majority of the movies that people are watching, and people are watching more movies now than ever, you know, even, yeah. even in back in the day when movies were, Hollywood was king, uh, they're watching more movies, you know, just more units of movie. And these movies teach them something, and sometimes it's it's hard to, you know, define the line between the fiction and the fact. You go from, you know, the cable news to the cable movie, and, you know, each one has an effect on you. And, and after a, a diet of that for two and a half, going on three years, it has an effect on the way you see the world, your worldview. Now, this movie was different. This movie yep. was, in a way, it was a whodunit. You know, you had to figure it out. You know, you had to make notes in your mind about where this is going. How do you explain these strange phenomena? Uh, this movie was different in the sense there was no violence at all. It was romance. It was art. It was, um, you know, a kind of fine appreciation of the world in which they were living, or the worlds, I should say, and the relationships they had. Um, it was nothing like Keanu Reeves' other movies. There was no violence, no vengeance, none of that, none of the guns, nothing like that. And yet, it was Beautiful. fascinating because it was challenging. And, I, and I, I want to say, George, I think what turns me on about a movie, any movie, 
is, is this challenging me? Is this gonna, it's gonna spoon out the information? It's gonna make me feel that I gotta solve the problem, make me feel I gotta learn what's going on. I gotta I collect data on it, right? When I collect enough data, then I will understand what the filmmaker is trying to tell me. Um, and so this movie fits neatly in that, much more than a shoot up movie. Um, and so I really appreciated this movie for that reason. Not only the romance, which, as you say, was very sweet, very well acted, very well written, uh, and the architecture, which was likewise very sweet, and, you know, and symbolic and interesting and a sort of a, a portal, a, a keyhole into the world of architecture and relationship of our structures with our lives and all that. Um, it was this thing about the time and looking at somebody through a mailbox, through through a cylindrical mailbox into another time and trying to figure out what's at the other side and why do I like this person so much? Uh, I mean, you could, you could plant those same kinds of uh, images and reactions and emotional, emotional experiences uh, in so many other love stories. But this one was the challenge. This wasn't, you know, a soap opera sappy thing at all. This, this made you think, it made you figure, it made you take the lessons of the movie and try to apply them to your own life or to other lives that you're familiar with. Yeah. Tell me your reaction. I, I totally agree with you. Number one, you're the quintessential attorney tries to get into the understanding the, the intricacies here. And so, so you're, you're, you're just like you were saying about architects and Attorneys, you know, you fit the bill exactly because you're trying to find out uh, the intricacies here. But um, I couldn't agree with you more. You know, uh, that there's very, there's no violence here. Her interaction, um, you know, with that uh, Iranian actress that plays her, her good friend, another another MD. You know, that's yeah. really good too. Yeah. And then all the interaction between the two sons, especially um, I think Al Alex. Yeah. Uh, you know, with his dad, there's, there's sort of an estrangement there. There's a coldness, and then he sees sometimes they sh when the, after the father dies, they show have a, his, his book, his memoir, and he's with this with this Alex as a little kid holding his hand. So he knows his father loves him, you know, as a as a small child. So there's a lot of interplay going on there, you know. I, I just love this movie, and as as we said before, too much. I don't want to see any more violence, you know. There's too much violence going on in the world as we, in the real world. So this is sort of like an escape. And uh, yeah, it's an escape from, thing, escape from I, violence for sure. So I, yeah, you know, I, I want the, to ask you about this thing. Um, the, you know, this movie points up um, a phenomenon that I'd like to explore with you just in a, for a moment. And that is, George, you and I have been talking about movies. We select them almost at random, whatever appeals, you know, whatever our taste draws us to at a given moment. And, um, and we, you know, we have a good time talking about them and trying to find some value in them or not. Um, but that's been going on for about a year, year and a half, whatever, how long. And I wanted to ask you this question. How, how has your taste in movies changed in the last year, year and a half? Okay. Well, you know, I, over the last 10, 15 years, I've only been to a few movies that are more like documentaries, right? And what it's done for me, it's got me back into the um, written feeling some emotion, you know, which I was sort of so dedicated to my school and my, my work, and I wasn't really watching movies. So it's got, it sort of opened up my world into you know, feelings again, you know, I mean, sort of emotions that I didn't even know I still had, you know. Are you, are you saying just, that you had an emotional reaction to this movie, The Lake House? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, it definitely it reminds you of your own, you know, life, you know, that's why I, I, I emailed you that it's too late for me in this life, but maybe in my, you know, reincarnation <laughs> in my next life. <laughs> definitely, de definitely made a difference. Uh, Is it, do, in, do I hear envy? You see this couple, yeah, this couple way, overcoming the obstacle of found... time, overcoming yeah, the they... obstacle of time, and you say, "Why can't I yeah. do that? Why can't that happen exactly. to me?" And it's envy, isn't why it? Why can't Why can't I go back and and know what I 
I know now back then, you know, <laughs> making mistakes because you, I was too young to, to get yeah. into this relationship. I didn't want yeah. to settle down because I was yeah, still yeah. in my 20s. I didn't want to be burdened, you know, and, and I figured, well, I'll just go on and then move on to somebody else. So, but bottom line is it brings back into your own life, like you've said before. And before we go, we should rate them, Jay, too. Uh, oh, so, I mean, I'll give you my rating. This is a 10, 10 plus. Now, where do you, how do you feel? 10 plus. Yeah. You know, and it's not, this is not a multi million dollar spectacular like Tom Cruise and, you know, the, the, the fighter pilot thing, you know, where they made $150 million in, in 24 hours or something at the, at, the, at the box office. This is a movie with a lot of thought, a lot of nuance. It's like you have to see it more than once to pick up on, on all the messaging that's going on there. And it's, it's different. It's not like any other movie you can find on Netflix. Really, it's unique in its Ooh. own category. It's hard to categorize this movie. And you wouldn't find it so easily. So I give it a 10 because I, I want to see this kind of creativity. I, I think filmmakers can and should go out of the box and, and stimulate us to think and emo, emote, I mean, or have an emotional reaction um, to what they're trying to tell us. I, I want to be provoked. I want to be encouraged. I want to, I want to understand the depth of experience they're trying to, to send my way. You can't do that in a shoot-up movie or a Marvel Comics movie. But in a movie like this, yes. And so, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's sad when I say this. There are no other movies that I can think of that really fit in this category. Uh, maybe you and I have touched on some that are worthy, um, but nothing yeah. quite like this one. Yeah. Great movie. Great, great movies we've been watching. And pretty much ver variety from different, different angles, too. So um, thanks. I know you chose this one. It was a really good choice, Jay. Definitely. All right. Well, I will, really we'll meet again on uh, June 12th. Um, and uh, two we'll, weeks, yeah. we'll see two weeks hence, and uh, we'll see what else we can find that will be worth discussing. That, you know, I mean, part of my gratification here is to be able to talk to you about it. Uh, forget this a show, um, but worth discussing in front of others, worth telling the story to others, worth recommending it or at least evaluating it for others. Um, so it's really a trip to do this. So we'll come up with something else, and it will be unusual also. Right? Good. George, thank Good. you so much, George. George Kaysen. Thank you, Jay. My partner in movie Aloha. review. <laughs> Aloha. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.